My journey through the Mistlands has led me halfway across the Tenth World, encountering new enemies, new friends, new trauma, over misty peaks and into infested mine after infested mine in search of lost dwarven treasures and something hopefully to point me towards the next boss. Last time, I managed to make significant headway through the newest biome to Valheim. I came across four of the nine fragments of the Dwarven Sealbreaker, collected a bunch of sap from the Great Yggdrasil tree itself, and died. A fair few times. And normally, that's just fine. You wake up, stuff your face full of food, and run back to your portal in nothing but a loincloth, ready to go and retrieve your- Oh f Well, after this devastation, my first job was, of course, to get back to my tombstone. And now that my portal was disconnected, there was only one way to do that. By boat. Building another longship would be the quickest way. But since I was running pretty low on iron, I wasn't really keen to sacrifice 10 ingots to craft the 100 iron nails necessary to build it. Besides, I already had a boat at the dockhouse. Sure, it was the smaller and slightly slower carve, but it would do the job. I set off on my journey south again, battling the wind and rain as I went, until after a full day and night of sailing, I finally made it all the way back to my longship and what remained of the other half of my portal. My tombstone was nearby and with it, all of my most prized possessions. But I knew I had to be careful as I could soon hear the Jarl that had killed me earlier rumbling in the mists above. I slowly snuck over to my body and managed to pick up all of my stuff without alerting the Jarl to my presence. But even though I had all my weapons back, I knew it wasn't the time for revenge. Until I'd got a new portal down, being in the Mistlands was far too risky, and I was not looking to do that journey again. I made a break back for the longship, waving goodbye to my trusty car. This time, I wasn't going to make the same mistake again. No more building lazy portals in the Mistlands. So I decided to head south into the Black Forest and set up my new portal there, after securing the area. Now that my teleportation was back up and running, it was time to pick up right where we left off. Remember? I know, I know, it's been a while. For the time being, I had two main priorities. Firstly, to find a runestone that would lead me to the location of the Mistlands boss, and secondly, to find five more dwarven fragments to complete the Sealbreaker. I wasn't quite sure what the Sealbreaker would be used for, but I figured it would be something to do with the boss, perhaps even to summon it. In addition to these two main aims, I could also do with upgrading the planes armor and weapons I was currently using, in favor of some of the new gear introduced with the Mistlands biome. I had a feeling I was going to need it. But all of this new stuff would come at a cost, and I'd probably need to pick up some more resources along the way. Since I was so low on iron, I decided to build a smelter next to my new portal to smelt down some of the scrap I'd already collected and any more I might find along the way. I left a bunch of scrap iron smelting while I headed back into the mists and began to scout out the southern extent of this region. Along the way, I came across a beautiful cove, which I was almost tempted to build in, a couple of abandoned dwarven buildings, and eventually an infested mine. I lured over a couple of the seeker guarding the mine into an abandoned dwarven tower across the water. And actually, maybe this would make a nice Mistlands base. That is, if there wasn't the big, spooky, infested mine next door. I particularly liked the cool hobbitess. Never mind. Once I'd taken out the Seeker, I decided to mark the mine on the map and began to head back towards base. I then returned the next morning, fully rested and with plenty of ooze bombs, because apparently I wasn't interested in, you know, leveling my skills. Inside I was greeted by a couple of two-star Seeker, which I weakened with some ooze bombs before falling down into their nests. Once I'd killed the young, I continued down and came across two secret doors. Both had the usual potions, coins, and sausages, but still no runestone to lead me to the next boss. At this point, I was really starting to wonder whether I was looking in the wrong place. 
In previous biomes, these runestones can often be found in crypts, caves, as well as derelict buildings, so I figured these abandoned mines would be the place to look. But who knows, they could very well be carved onto the backs of Jarl for all I know. Things were starting to look up as I came across the fifth sealbreaker fragment. Only four more left, but I was soon surrounded by Seeker. I managed to draw one away from the others and take it down. But as I headed back to find out where the others had gotten to, I was ambushed from above. I grabbed some more loot and headed out and decided to build a quick fire to replenish my rested buff. After taking in the sights, I continued exploring and soon came across a dwarven quarry that was overrun with Seeker. I quickly cleared them out and began breaking open all of the crates that were left lying around. Inside these crates was a bunch of soft tissue, which I'd recently learned is actually just smushed up dwarf. Hang on though, aren't these dwarven quarries? Why would the dwarves keep crates full of smushed up dwarf? But as I was questioning all of this, I was rudely interrupted by my least favourite sound in the game, a yarl. I was at least getting half decent at taking them out, and soon managed to shoot it down. I was even rewarded with my first trophy for my troubles, another to add to my collection. But I think I'll have to be careful where I put this one. Once home and rested, I remembered I hadn't yet built the newest piece of machinery, the IT refinery which I now had enough sap to build. The refinery was very strange looking, with a big grinder at the top that I built some stairs up to, but I had no idea what I was meant to be grinding. Nothing I had in my inventory was working. I had a rummage through storage to see what items I'd collected from the Mislans so far. Royal jelly? No, that's not very grindy. Blood clots maybe? Surely carapace? Nope. But you know what did work? Are we the baddies? I reluctantly added the small amount of soft tissue I collected into the grinder, along with some sap. And after a bit of chaos, out popped some refined eye tier, which unlocked a bunch of new items and weapons. I left the eye tier to accumulate and headed back through the portal, where I eventually reached the northwestern border of this area of Misslands. I'd pretty much explored the entire region by now, so I decided it was about time to get back on my longship in search of some new area of Mistlands. I just needed to go and pick up my sap collector and I would be ready to head off. Along the way, I came across a dwarven building which was under attack from a Jarl. The dwarves looked like they could probably use some help, but since I was now apparently in the market for dwarven soft tissues, I figured I should probably lie low and let nature take its course. It seemed the most ethical way of doing things. The Jarl had also done a lot of damage to the roof of the tower, so I ran in to see if the component crate at the top had been destroyed. These crates hold the dwarven extractors required to build the sap collector, but the catch is, if you break them open yourself, you're going to be in a lot of trouble with the dwarves guarding it. So it's best to let something else, like this Jarl here, do the deed for you. I mean, I did already have one sap collector going, but... Two would be much better than one, right? But of course, the only thing the Yarl hadn't destroyed in the whole tower was the component crate. I tried to jump over to the crate and lure the Yarl towards it, but the dwarves soon managed to take it down, crate intact. For a good moment, I stood staring at the component crate, considering my options. Should I just destroy it anyway? Maybe I'm supposed to kill them. I need their soft <laughs> No, I better not. The guilt would be too much. I said my goodbyes and, of course, looted the couple of dwarfs that hadn't made it before continuing on, morals pretty much intact, towards my sap collector. I broke it up, grabbing my one precious dwarven extractor and headed back to base. After resting up for the night, I changed my power for the long voyage ahead and once again set off in my ship. 
I sailed and sailed until I came across what seemed like a small area of mistlands. So I thought I'd park up, build a portal and have a quick look around. Not far from the portal, I stumbled across a Uten skull that was crushed under a Yggdrasil root. I decided to start mining the skull for some black marble, just in case I wanted to build a black forge at the next stop. But to my surprise and relief, the inside of its skull was absolutely full of soft tissue. I didn't have to kill the dwarves after all. Uh, not that that was something I ever considered. Now that I'd cleared out this fella's brains, it was time to get back to the portal. Not only had my rested buff run out, but I was now practically running on fumes. I should have made a quick fire and rested up, but I really wanted to push on just a little bit further, and eventually, my luck ran out. Unlike last time, my portal had remained intact, so it was just a short, wet trip back to get my stuff. The seeker that killed me seemed to have cleared off, so I ventured on and managed to come across yet another Hewton skull. Once I'd killed the ticks guarding it, I started hacking away at its brains. Ew. But after a while, I began to hear a few seeker wandering around outside that must have been drawn in by all the noise I was making. But the local fauna wasn't the only problem. See, while it had been super easy to fall into the Uten skull mouth, it was not so easy to jump out. And I only had a very small amount of usage left in my pickaxe. Just 12 more hits. And if it were to break, I would be stuck with only one option and yet more dreaded skill drain. While I was relatively safe for the moment, I had to be careful, as some attacks could still reach me inside the skull. Luckily, I still had my trusty ooze bombs on hand, which weakened the swarm outside and also seemed to deter the soldiers. Now was my chance to hack away at the jawbone. I just had to be careful how I used my remaining 12, <sighs> 11 uses. The jawbone proved to be harder than I thought, and as the durability of my pickaxe continued to fall and fall, I started to lose my nerve. But finally, I broke through, with only one hit of my pickaxe left. I waited for the Star Seeker to move out the way before spam jumping my way to freedom. I then made a run for it, back to the safety of the Black Forest and to my portal. I put my ethically sore soft tissue to good use and rested up for the night. Since I now had so much soft tissue to crunch, I needed some more sap to fuel the crunching, so I whipped out the sap extractor near the portal and left it to collect. I then continued into the mistlands, which had actually turned out to be a little bigger than I thought from the coast. I soon came across an abandoned mine, and after defeating the seeker outside, I headed down into it. The mine was literally full of ticks. Just tick after tick after tick. You get the picture and I even got to take one home with me. Nice. Another one for the obliterator. At the bottom of the mine, I could see another seal breaker fragment, although I would have to get past a star seeker and soldier first. After my last death, I knew I had to be a bit more careful with the mobs in the game. So I tried to keep my distance for the most part until they were weak enough to finish with a few hits. I grabbed the sixth seal breaker and made a dash for the exit. I did have another little look around, but it seemed like this was all there was to this area of mistlands. Yep, it was once again time to move on. This would be my fifth, sixth mistlands now, and I had no idea whether I was heading towards the next boss or not. I grabbed the sap I'd collected and broke up the sap extractor before heading back to the ship. It wasn't long before I spotted some mistlands ahead of me in the fog, but I didn't want to waste any more time on another small area, so I decided to sail around a bit to get an idea of its size, and even spotted an infested mine in the distance, which I marked on my map for later. Thankfully, this mistland seemed to make up a pretty large area, so I parked up in the plains that bordered it and built a portal home to rest up. Back at base, the IT refinery had been hard at work crushing brains, and I realized I now had enough idea to build one of the new workbenches, the Golder Table. I placed it outside, unlocking a bunch of new magic themed items and the seal breaker that I'd been collecting the fragments for, but it needed a roof. So I moved it inside into the corner of my main hall. I only had quite a small amount of idea to craft with and I wasn't sure I wanted to go down the magic user route. 
although some of the magic staffs did look pretty cool. But what really caught my attention was the feather cape. Minus 100% fall damage? If my calculations are correct, that would mean you take zero fall damage while wearing this cape. What have I been missing out on? I grabbed some feathers and hair hides and crafted the new cape, which I definitely like the look of, but time to test it out. Yep, I love it. And of course, I spent the next 20 minutes just jumping off stuff with my new cloak. Cliffs, trees, buildings. It was just so satisfying to be able to glide down off all of these beautiful peaks after having to be so careful all this time not to fall down and die. So, you know when I saw a sterilic bridge over the sea, I just had to go and jump off it. I was contemplating all of the coolest ways to jump off the bridge and whether I would need a run up when I saw a Jarl approaching from the distance. As it got closer, I started to shoot at it with my bow and managed to get its health down by about half. But rather unsurprisingly, this just seemed to anger the Jarl and I soon realized I was in a bit of a pickle. The bridge was so small that it was very hard to dodge the Jarl's attacks and I now wasn't sure whether I had the stamina to get back onto the cliff. I panicked and jumped across onto the other column, but got caught on one of the blocks and... I fell. I was going to have to be very careful about getting my stuff back, especially as without my new magic cloak, I could now take fall damage again. I stealthily swam over to the column where my body had fallen, and was completely and utterly confused when I couldn't see my tombstone anywhere in the water. Ah, fuck. And, to make things worse, the Yarl was back. It hadn't aggroed on me yet, so I tried to hide behind the column. Once it started to turn away, I made a break for land, but quickly began to drown. I turned back to the column to see if I could walk into it and regain some stamina. You can sometimes do this with cliffs if you don't have enough stamina to jump out the water. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It didn't work. I panicked and headed back for shore, when I was poisoned by a puffer fish. I persevered on, but the Jarl had now spotted me. I managed to make it to land just in time before drowning, before some ticks hiding in the water finished me off. <sighs> I knew that this could quite easily turn into one of those never-ending cycles of death and despair. But that wasn't going to happen. This time I had a plan. I just had to sneak onto the bridge and get the fu- Another one? The plan was out the window. I made a break across the bridge and leapt over towards my stuff. I quickly equipped my cloak and jumped down towards the water. Once down, I climbed up the bank and took a couple of shots on the Jarl. I knew that I had to get back to the mainland and get some more height so I jumped back into the water towards land. I continued to climb up back towards the bridge as I took some more shots on the Jarl. Luckily, the other one seemed to have got bored and cleared off, and once the Jarl began its little wiggle animation, I knew I had it down. That could have really gone way worse than it did. I jumped down to grab my other tombstone as a thunderstorm rolled in. I didn't want to linger here too long in case the second Jarl became aggroed again so I headed over to a dwarven tower across the cove. From there, I headed south, in search of more mines. Through the rain and lightning, I spotted a strange rock formation in the distance. Was something up at the top? I headed towards it and decided to make it my mission to climb it and see what was up there. Maybe this was the location of the runestone to point me in the right direction of the next boss. However, this climb was easier said than done. But with each failed attempt after failed attempt after failed attempt, I learned the best areas to spam jump my way up and got a little bit closer and closer. Finally, I was within touching distance and was quickly able to spam jump the rest of the way up to the top to find nothing. Just this dwarven mislay, ah. But at least the storm had passed by now, giving me a great view of the surrounding region. From 
up here, I could see an infested mine to the west, which I jumped down towards and began shooting at the seeker guarding it. I contemplated resting at the entrance to get my buff back, but obviously I decided to wing it, didn't I? Once inside, I was immediately overrun with ticks, and as I wasn't rested, I often didn't even have the stamina to roll them off me. Sooner or later, I seemed to plow through enough of them, and continued further down into the mine. I came across a few hidden rooms where I picked up some potions and sausages, but still no boss stone. I did at least manage to get my seventh fragment of Sealbreaker, which meant that there were just two more to go. I was now so close to completing the Sealbreaker, I felt freshly invigorated to finish the job. I still had the infested mine I'd spotted earlier marked on my map, so after heading back to base to rest up and repair everything, I started south towards the map marker. On the way, I saw another mine through the mists, and decided to quickly check it out. I took out the Seeker Guardian and headed inside, and soon found an eighth Sealbreaker fragment very close to the main chamber. But after tons of Seeker and even more ticks, I had no luck finding any more, or a boss stone. So I continued on to the original mine I was aiming for, and you can tell just how excited I was to get in and hopefully grab the last piece of the puzzle. No rested buff, no forsaken power, and I couldn't even be asked to deal with the seeker outside. Once I'd gotten past the welcome committee, I headed down a deep passage where I was greeted by even more ticks, and then finally, just behind me, the boss stone, which pointed to the location of the next boss, the queen, a bit northeast of here. And to make things even better, in the next chamber, I spotted the final fragment of Sealbreaker. It was finally complete. We were finally getting somewhere. I thought about continuing on through the rest of the mine, but nah, time to get home. Back at base, I collected up all of the fragments I'd found and finally crafted the Sealbreaker. And do you know where I was headed next? Well, not the queen, not just yet anyway. I mean, Look at me. With my padded armor and black metal weapons, I was probably going to get eaten alive by this queen. I knew I had to stop being indecisive and just upgrade my gear. So I forced myself to start making some decisions. Magic? No. I'll definitely do a video on magic sometime, because I think it's a really interesting addition to the game. But at this point, it would take a lot of grinding to get my skills high enough to take down the queen. And since I had no idea what the Queen was like, I could very well spend a bunch of time and resources only for magic to be completely ineffective against the boss. I knew I definitely wanted to try out the Arbalest, and for just 8 iron, it didn't seem like too much. The Arbalest proved to be pretty fun to use, and definitely packed a punch, but the painfully slow reload meant that this would probably be great as a first shot sneak attack, but not much use after that. My current highest levels were in swords and bows, so these seemed like the obvious choice. I was definitely a little reluctant to say goodbye to my beloved Draugafang in favour of the new Spine Snap Bow, but all good things must come to an end, and the extra pierce damage would definitely come in handy. Thankfully, the new bow was relatively cheap, particularly since I'd been hoarding bone fragments for some reason, and I managed to craft it and fully upgrade it. As for swords, the Mistlands biome introduced two new variants, a one-handed sword, Mistwalker, and a two-handed sword, Krom. I sort of toyed with the idea of trying out the two-handed variant, and even began to collect a bit of tin and copper for the bronze, but eventually I decided to go with the one-handed sword, paired with a shield. Plus, the two-handed sword needs like double the resources to make, and I really wasn't prepared for the grind. As well as regular slash damage, Mistwalker also deals a bit of frost damage, which has the additional effect of slowing down your enemies, particularly if they're wet. Unfortunately, thanks to my impulse arbalist, I was a bit short of the iron required to build the Mistwalker, so I headed back into the Mistlands to search for some more iron for my new sword. After quite a bit of searching, and of course, trying out my new bow, no, that's a lot of damage. I finally found some ancient armor, and got to work mining away at it. However, I was soon interrupted by two one-star seeker and a seeker soldier. With the boss coming up, I knew I had to grind my bow and sword skills as much as possible, 
and I was determined to beat the mob without any ooze bombs. I was sent flying off the cliff into the water below, but was quickly able to jump out and lure one of the seekers away from the others. I then went back for the rest, but as soon as I took out the second starred seeker, the soldier gave out its war cry, and three more seeker appeared. <sighs> Once they were dealt with, it was just me and the soldier, which now I'd got its move set down, I finally managed to finish it off, pretty comfortably. After that little detour, I finally got back to mining the ancient armour, and headed back to the portal where I made a smelter for the scrap iron. Combined with the iron I'd smelted earlier, I eventually had enough for the Mistwalker, but not its upgrade yet unfortunately. Still, it was already quite the upgrade on my black metal sword, and it was also pretty decent at dispelling the surrounding mists, although I think I'll be keeping hold of my wisp light for the time being. Now that I had my weapons sorted, all I was missing was a new shield and definitely some new armour, both of which were mostly made out of carapace from the Seeker. Luckily between my Mistlands Black Forge and my home Black Forge, I had enough iron to craft both the breastplate and greaves. And I must say, for someone literally covered in bugs, I think I was looking pretty damn stylish. Once the carapace shield was crafted, my transformation was finally complete and it was time to head to my final destination, the Queen. I left some potions brewing, changed my power to motors, and headed back through the portal. The marker showed that the Queen was to the east of me, but rather than sailing my ship around the whole continent, I decided to break it up and head east on foot across the plains. Once I hit the sea, I rebuilt my ship and was now within touching distance of the Queen. I decided to park up in the Black Forest across the water from where the Queen would be, and got to work setting up my portal home. I figured it would also be useful to have another portal a bit closer to the Queen, so back at base I made sure to rename one of my old portals, that I hoped to connect to another a bit closer to the Queen's location. I then headed back to my ship and made the short trip across to the Mistlands, towards the Queen's summoning area. As well as setting up my new portal near the Queen, I also wanted to collect a little bit more iron to finish upgrading the Mistwalker sword and my armour before braving the boss fight. Luckily there was plenty of ancient swords and ancient armour near the coast, and I was soon back at the ship with what I hoped would be more than enough iron. And I finally had enough to fully upgrade everything. Now on to find a good place for my Queen portal. I headed back in the ship and pushed on towards the map marker but despite being so close to the boss after all of this time, the road ahead was tough, and it seemed like there was just mob after mob after mob. But slowly I inched closer, until eventually I looked down upon the entrance to the Queen's Lair. And yes, it was going dark. Yes, I had no rested buff, but seeing the entrance after all of this time, I really couldn't help myself from flying down to get a closer look. Ah. And once again, I was quickly overrun with Seeker. I popped my bone mass power before rolling down into a deep and rather wet ravine. The lack of rested buff and now the added wet debuff meant that my stamina was regenerating very slowly, and I was struggling to gain some distance to recover. Unfortunately for the Seeker that had followed me into the ravine, they were now also wet, making them weak to the frost damage dealt by my new sword, and practically immobile. That was too close. I knew I had to find somewhere for my portal home fast. I figured that inside the walls where I landed might be a good location, assuming that there weren't any restrictions on building there, so I headed back up towards the Queen's Lair. As I got out of the ravine, the mist highlighted what looked like a window in the walls surrounding the courtyard, and inside I spotted a little dwarven lantern on a table. I gave the window a go, but after all of those locks pies, there was no way I was getting through here. I headed around the walls perimeter to try and find a door, but while I found a few more windows, there didn't seem to be any way to get in. I was just about to get my pickaxe out when I came across a section of black marble that had been replaced by a wooden wall. A few whacks of my axe and I was in, to what seemed like a cute dwarven pub, complete with casks, little tables and chairs, 
and even tankets filled with questionable beverages. But perhaps most importantly, it was both safe from the dangers outside and had just enough room for me to set up my portal home. I knew now that there was nothing left to do but to take on the Queen. I still had no idea what I would be up against, so raided my cupboards for a couple of different potions, to cover all bases. I also had to decide what food I was going to bring along, and make sure I had enough of it. After looking through the cauldron and what I had in my stores, I decided to go with the Mist Hair Supreme, Honey Glazed Chicken and Fish and Bread, but also slipped a few Mushroom Omelette in my bag in case I ended up needing a bit more stamina. With my bag packed and the completed Seal Breaker in hand, I headed back to the Mistlands and up the steps towards the door. We sealed the door shut and scattered the key. Leave her be. Well, that's quite the warning. But I've got a job to do, and this playthrough part is already delayed enough. The massive vault door opened up into a narrow little corridor. I cautiously peered outside into the main citadel, but the Queen was nowhere to be seen. I could, however, hear her, somewhere in the mist. To try and avoid too much attention, I hadn't initially equipped my wisp light, but the mist was so thick I couldn't see anything without it. The wisp light revealed a grand marble staircase before me. I made my way up the steps and through the citadel, as the Queen's cries became louder and louder. The mist seemed to clear the further up I went, and eventually, I saw the Queen above me. As I still had the element of surprise and wanted to maintain some distance for the time being, I got out my arbalist and waited for a clear shot. But despite the stealth bonus, the bolt did pretty measly damage and the fight had now begun. For now, I just wanted to observe the Queen and try to pick up on her moveset. She had a powerful swipe, which had pretty decent range, that seemed like it should be easy enough to roll dodge away from. The mobs, however, were relentless. The bile bombs I'd crafted were at least proving useful against them, but they had been pretty costly to make and wouldn't last for long. Since the bow wasn't doing very much damage, I decided to try Miss Walker. I popped my bone mass power, ready for some close combat with the Queen. But her attacks had significant knockback, and I was quickly booted back into the mist below. I raced back up to the top of the citadel and eventually managed to get a few hits in, before tumbling back down again. This time, the Queen came looking for me, along with her seeker mobs. Miss Walker definitely seemed like the way to go. But just as I was starting to get the hang of roll dodging her attacks, the Queen disappeared into the ground. Down here at the bottom of the citadel, it was far more misty, making it much harder to find the Queen, and a lot easier to be snuck up on. I knew I had to get back up towards the top of the citadel and out of the mist. Plus, if I was ever to get into a bit of a tight spot, I could always make a quick escape by leaping off the side of the balcony. Now that I'd got her health down by about a quarter, the Queen got herself a new attack, spewing out poison slime all over me, from which tons of the Baby Seeker appeared. Seems like I would be needing that poison resistance mead after all. And this wasn't even the only poison I had to look out for. The Queen also had a poison bite attack, which did a hefty amount of damage even as I tried to dodge. My bone mass power had now run out, and it was making a real difference to the damage I was taking. As things were starting to look bad, I jumped off and backed down into the mist. I knew that I was going to need more poison potions anyway, so I made the decision to head out of the citadel and back to base. I would have to be quick though, as the longer I was away, the more health would be restored by the Queen. I made sure to quickly fix up my stuff and re-rest before heading back through the portal. 
The Queen intercepted me close to the entrance to the Citadel. Not really where I wanted to be. I made a run for it back up towards the top of the Citadel, fighting my way through seas of Baby Seeker. I got a couple more hits on the Queen, but then missed a dodge on her bite attack. The attack did a ton of damage, and had also poisoned me. Which is when I realised my poison mead had just run out. Sadly knew that my death was inevitable, so I leapt off the balcony, trying to get my body as close to the entrance as possible. The skill drain definitely hurt, but there was no time to waste. I had to get back to the citadel as soon as possible, to avoid losing even more progress. Luckily, I'd managed to die pretty close to the entrance, and had soon snuck back to my tombstone and re-equipped everything. The Queen had now returned to her original position, back at the top of the citadel, so I got my arbalist ready for another sneak attack. I then popped my bone mass power and proceeded to get in a few successful rallies, taking the Queen down to near half health. But now she had another new attack to add to her moveset, a powerful rush attack which managed to sandwich me against the wall a couple of times, and also allowed her to do this. Despite the Queen's growing moveset, I was continuing to make good progress, but as it looked like my Miss Walker sword would soon need repairing again, I decided to head back through the portal and quickly fix it up. As I was now pretty much out of Bile Bombs, I figured it might be a good idea to try a different way of getting rid of the Seeker Brood preferably something with good knockback. The new Demolisher Club would probably be best for this, but as I didn't have the iron on hand to craft it, I decided to try the significantly weaker level 1 iron sledge that I had in storage, which did seem to do pretty decent damage against the brood. Once I'd taken out the mobs near the entrance, the citadel became eerily quiet, and the queen was being very elusive. Eventually, I found her, and continued to chip away at her health, bit by bit by bit, until she was down to less than 25%. I was so nearly there, when I suddenly realised that all this time, I hadn't been repairing my feather cloak at the Golder table, and it was now very close to breaking. I knew I had to go back and fix it. I was so close to beating the Queen, I didn't want to fall at the last hurdle. Literally. So for what I hoped would be the last time, I headed back to base and fixed up my cloak. On my return, I still had a good few minutes of cooldown on Bone Mass's power. I decided that until then, I would try and keep my distance from the Queen. Once this power was ready, I ran up to the top of the citadel and triggered it. But this obviously scared the Queen shitless, and she quickly made a break for it into the ground. I knew I had to take advantage of the next five minutes of Bone Mass power. No more waiting for the Queen to come to me. I had to go and find her now. I rushed at her tail and started frantically hacking away at it, as long as my stamina would allow. I downed a stamina mead and jumped back in, as the Seeker desperately tried to defend her. The Queen started to dive back into the ground, but through the poison mists, I finally got her. The Queen was dead. I finished off the remaining mobs and approached my trophy. Along with the trophy, the Queen had also dropped a few placeholder items, which would be sure to come in useful when the upcoming Ashlands update is released, and this time I was going to make sure to put them somewhere I wouldn't lose track of them. Criminal scum. Now to hang my trophy up at the sacrificial stones. Increased mining speed and boosted IT regen. Hmm. Well, the mining speed would sure come in handy. If I'd learn anything at all from this adventure, it's that you always need more iron. I used the Queen's power and collected a heap more scrap iron before starting the long journey home, waving goodbye to the Mistlands, for now at least. Hopefully, later this year, we can pick up right where we left off and head off on a new adventure into the Ashland. Oh, hold up. What is that? Well, I guess I could go and take a quick look. Thank you so much all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Sorry it took as long as it did. I had to take a break from making videos to finish my uh, doctorate studies, 
but I'm all done now. I passed, yay. <laughs> and I'm super excited to take the leap into doing what I love, making crazy videos and informative video guides full time. So it would really, really help me out if you could like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel um, to help push the videos out to more and more people and continue to grow our community. I've also launched a Patreon, which I'll be adding updates, taking polls on what guides people would like to see. So if you want to support the channel even more and see your name in the credits of future videos, please consider checking that out. And lastly, if you don't know, I also stream now. So feel free to come over and pop into chat. Uh, it's very chill. We just play different survival games typically um, and a bunch of Valheim as well, of course. And I really hope to see you there. Also, join the Discord. I always forget to plug the Discord. I just wanted to say that it's really so good to be back. Thank you for sticking with the channel while I've been gone, and I really look forward to the next. Until then, I hope you have a really great day.